are you from? I actually grew up around here. I grew up in, uh, I lived when I was a little kid, um, outside of Danville. Like only if you went to Carver Hall and mm -hmm. you walk straight west for five miles, that was my great grandfather's farm. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to Sunbury, uh, which is down river just a little farther. 15 years in August. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dr. Lawrence and I came at the, at the same time. I attended um, the University of Massachusetts Amherst campus, which uh, has uh, just celebrated its 50th year uh, for the MFA program there. So it's kind of a, a fairly prestigious MFA program. I'm not sure why they let me in, but they did. <laughs> uh, but the woman, one of the women uh, that I went to school with uh, is actually the poet laureate of the United States. She was an early reader. I was a, a only child on a farm. So, so, so I can talk to the ducks and, uh, <laughs> and then uh, you know, go out in the creek and play a little bit, but then I like to read. I actually didn't go to kindergarten, uh, and, uh, but I stayed home and I, I remember learning to read before I went to first grade, and I would always like to read books, and then I started to try to write my own stuff, and I continued to keep going. It's hard to say favorite. Um, <laughs> I think for poetry... Um, there's a book called The Dream Songs by John Berryman, uh, where he has all these interconnected poems um, that are, I think there's what, 385 of them. So, and they're all in a certain framework. Mm -hmm. um, and so I like that idea. And my last book, it wasn't exactly that, it's certainly not that long, but I was trying to, um, to emulate that a little bit along with William Carlos Williams, what he was doing about with Patterson and writing these long poems about a specific place. Mm -hmm. um, so I sort of like those in poetry, but I read lots of stuff. I read nonfiction, lots of nonfiction, lots of fiction, and I'm always, always reading stuff. Yeah, yeah, lots of the tough one. Like I like my, one of my favorite movies is The Deer Hunter with uh, Robert De Niro and Christopher Walken. Did you ever see that? It's out a long time ago. I don't. I might have. I don't know. But it's set. It's about. Uh, guys who are like just regular Pennsylvania guys from out in western Pennsylvania and they like go on deer hunting but then they all get drafted to see Vietnam War and it's really a powerful anti-war movie. Mm -hmm. It's really, really uh, kind of some crazy stuff happens and I took a girl to a, on it for a date once and then she was crying oh, no. and, and that was the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> but I still like the movie. I still like the movie. And, uh, but I also like, there's a, 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 a movie uh, called La Strada. It's by Federico Fellini and it stars Anthony Quinn and it was the best foreign film in the 1957 Academy Awards. It's a really interesting uh, movie. Fellini movies are kind of weird. It's about a circus strong man. And, uh, it's, a kind of, it's kind of an interesting film. So I think those are my two favorites. Uh, right there. The East Street Band, right? So I always go see uh, uh, Bruce Springsteen. Uh, <laughs> I just got a, a new vehicle that has a satellite radio, so there's an E Street channel. Oh, <laughs> Perfect. <to> that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I still, I mean, Springsteen was who I listened to in high school, and I was, all these years later, I still listen to it. I like a lot of stuff. I like uh, blues and, and uh, you know, some blues, some old jazz. Um, you know, not too much on, you know, Miley Cyrus, so, but, you know, some no, that's old true. school stuff is fine. <laughs> You know, it's, it's, for me, it's always about writing the next one, right? And, uh, and I, I've been, I don't know, I always think about, like, I, like I'm looking forward to this summer when I will have uh, not all these papers in front of me to grade. <laughs> yeah. And I can actually spend some of my energy writing, because the book that I just published this spring, I want to do a follow-up to that with the, uh, not necessarily the same character, but there's a character that, who appears uh, towards the end of the book, and I want to write some more poems about him. Um, you know, there's poems that I like. Uh, I wrote a poem about Roy Campanella, who was a catcher for the Brooklyn Dodgers back in the 50s, and uh, that one's been in about five or six anthologies, so I'm like proud of that, that it was a very successful poem. Uh, and I also think about that in terms of collaboration, because somebody suggested I make that poem. Right? This, also, I read uh, a, a, a friend of mine, uh, was talking about poetry and I stole an idea he had which is about um, baseball and using old like when the covers would come off the baseball as a taping them and I uh, up and I wrote a whole poem about these taped up baseballs that kids would use back in the old days and uh, but that got just published in a, a, a 
journal in Ireland, which is kind of that's interesting awesome. to me. I sent it out, but that's kind of the cool stuff about the internet. You can mm -hmm. send work to different places. So they're it's they're mailing me a copy of the publication from Ireland. It just got published last week, so I haven't seen it. So I'm sort of looking forward. Oh, well, then I will confess to him. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know. Yeah, it is. I like to watch swamp people. Well, I think creative writing. Um, People don't necessarily realize it, but it, it does a couple of things. It helps you solve problems. If I give my students, for example, uh, in my poetry writing class in the fall, a sonnet, that's a pretty hard thing to do, to write a good sonnet. Um, and you have a um, few tools to do it. You, know, you have your, your vocabulary, uh, you know the format, but to, to write a good sonnet, which has been around for about a thousand years, that form, it's a kind of it's kind of a difficult thing. So it's solving problems in the same. You could make some other comparisons in fiction about ways to solve problems. Um, it's collaboration, learning to work well with others. Because in workshops, you have to sit there and listen and not talk back when somebody says uh, you're not doing this well, right? And and then you, you gotta go, you know, gotta think about it and go, hmm. and then you know, then you you get ideas from other people. And likewise, you can help other people by saying. Here's where I think this could be improved. So you're being close readers, you're using la language inventively, uh, you're learning to think on your feet. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of skills that are transferable. Mm -hmm.